name is Zemo, and I'd like to welcome all the kids that are watching to the Yo-Yo Show today. I'm here at the Clinton Macomb Public Library, and I want to teach you today how to do yo-yos. And the first thing you need to know is what's the best kind of yo-yo to learn. I use a Duncan Pro Yo. This yo-yo is hollowed out on the inside on both sides. So it's specially weighted to be efficient. This yo-yo I'm holding over here, the green one, this is a yo-yo I had when I was a kid. It's made out of wood. And you can't hollow the wood out because it would make the yo-yo too weak and too easy to break. So this was really hard to learn to do yo-yo tricks when I was a kid. You had to practice all day just to learn simple tricks. If you have a good yo-yo like this, they're easy to learn. And this is not an expensive yo-yo. You can buy these online. If you go to the Duncan Yo-Yo website, look up Pro-Yo, P-R-O-Y-O. Look up Pro-Yo, and you can order one for $5. I'm going to put this one away and show you the most basic trick I learned with this yo-yo. When I first started out, this is actually the trick everybody first learns. It's called the gravity pull. If you hold the yo-yo out in front of you and you let go of it, as soon as you let go, it goes down, it hits the bottom of the string and it comes up. Now the force that makes the yo-yo go down is gravity. So gravity pulls the yo-yo down, but gravity always pulls down. So how can the yo-yo come back up? Two things. First, if you watch my hand, not the yo-yo, you'll see my hand goes up and down too. So when the yo-yo hits the bottom of the string, I lift up. In other words, gravity pulls it down and I pull it up. The other thing is the yo-yo is spinning. So it has a special kind of inertia or energy to make it come back up to your hand. And the difference between this yo-yo and the yo-yo I started with is that you hardly have to lift up. This yo-yo is so energy efficient, it comes up easily. Now when I do this trick, the yo-yo goes slow. And because of that, it's the only trick you can do if you just drop a yo-yo. All the other fun tricks, all the cool tricks, you have to make the yo-yo go up and down the string faster. And to do that, you throw the yo-yo. But if you hold it like this, you can't get much more speed. The secret is to hold the yo-yo upside down. So if I turn sideways, what you can see is first I'm going to bend my wrist, then I'm going to bend my elbow, and then I can snap. Try doing that at home. Make a muscle and then snap. Then when you let go, the yo-yo will go fast. This is faster than if you just drop it. And the harder you throw it, the faster it goes. Watch. Let me throw it harder. Ouch. That was a lot faster. Now this time I'm going to throw it as fast as I can. Some of you may not even be able to see. So watch carefully. Oh, I guess you caught me. I didn't throw the yo-yo that time. That's just a cheap gag. But here's the thing. When you can make the yo-yo go really fast, you can do incredible tricks, and they look like magic. Here's my favorite. It's called the sleeper. If you throw the yo-yo down, you can make it spin at the bottom of the string. And when you put your fingers here and snap, it comes back up. I'm sure you're wondering, how does he do that? Well, very well. But here's the secret. When I snap my fingers, that didn't have anything to do with the trick. It just made you look down. I did the trick with this hand way up here, which was almost out of the picture. So I'll show you again. Watch this hand, not down here. When I snapped my finger, I just pulled up on the string. 
that made the yo-yo come back up. And it doesn't matter where you lift up on the string. You can lift up here in the middle. You can lift up even right below your hand, and it'll come up. Or you can even hit the string. That's a trick I invented. It's called hit the string. Now, once you can make the yo-yo stay at the bottom of the string, you can learn hundreds of other tricks. Probably the most famous is rock the baby in the cradle. You put the baby to sleep, build a cradle, rock the baby, and when you're done, burp the baby. Another cool trick is called walk the dog. So now there he goes, it's Rover. Um, you can do skin the cat. I'm going to pick the yo-yo up, pull the string over my finger and lift it way up high so the yo-yo is going to be up here. When I take my finger up, the yo-yo starts down, but then it goes straight out in front. I'll do it again. Get it way up high, let go, and it goes straight out in front. Oops. Back up here. All right. You can throw the yo-yo in different directions, and that gives you a whole bunch of other different tricks. For example, if I throw the yo-yo out in front of me, it hits the end of the string and comes straight back. This is an easy trick. This is called the forward pass. And the forward pass was a trick that was rarely seen during the Schembechler era, for those of you that are football fans. Now, if you don't catch a forward pass, it's not an incomplete. It's called loop-de-loop. -loop. So when the yo-yo comes back to my hand, I flick my wrist and it goes back out again. Watch, I'll do it again. So just when it gets near my hand, I do this with my fingers. Try this at home. Just have three fingers out in front of you and try doing this. Now watch, I'll do a whole bunch in a row. And you can see I'm just flicking my wrist. The yo-yo goes around and around and around. Years ago, they used to have yo-yo contests, and if they had a tie, all the kids with the same score would go up on the stage. Somebody would count, one, two, three, go, and all the kids would start doing loop de loop The last kid who was still going would win the contest, and they'd get a brand new bicycle and a patch to sew on their shirt that said yo-yo champion on it. Sometimes people would see somebody who had a patch that said Yo-Yo Champion on it, and they would figure out who won the contest when he was nine years old. And then they'd know who to clap their hands for. Another cool trick is called Hop the Fence. You throw the Yo-Yo down, and when it comes up, you pop your wrist the other way, and it will go down again. This is called Hop the fence. Uh, finally, I'm going to show you one of my favorite funny tricks. This one's called eating spaghetti. And all you're going to do is pretend that the string is spaghetti. And you know when you eat spaghetti, how you wrap it up on your fork? Well, I'm going to use my fingers to be the fork. I'm going to wind the string around it, and then I'm going to slurp. Yummy. Okay, now once again, this is a basic yo-yo. It's not a special expensive yo-yo. You can do hundreds of tricks with a yo-yo like this. The secret is you have to practice. And let me just say that I've learned it's better to practice every day for 15 minutes than it is to practice once a week for an hour or so, or even more. So spread your practice out work hard at it, and you can also get information online, and you can check out books here in the library on yo-yos, and I'm sure they have an instructional book that will cover all the tricks I've showed you today.
Now, you can get really fancy and advanced with yo-yos. I'm going to show you a different style of yo-yo. I'm going to hold these right up near the camera so you can see. The green yo-yo I'm holding has a big space between the two ads. It's different from the one I was just using. This is wide. This is called the butterfly shape yo-yo, and it allows you to do fancy looking tricks because you can easily thread the string around your finger and then back around the yo-yo. I'll show you that again, okay? I'm gonna hold this finger out, my index finger, I'm gonna wrap the string around that finger and then come back around and it's around the yo-yo and my finger at the same time. When the yo-yo is spinning, you can put the string into the groove and spin it around your finger like this, and then it comes back. I'll do that sideways so you can see what it looks like. Okay, put the string in the groove. That's called thread the needle. Now, once you thread the needle, you can do other variations. Like this, you thread the needle, go around here, come back around here, one more time, right back to your hand. These yo-yos are the same price as the beginner model, but this has a ball bearing, so it spins for a longer period of time. And you have to kind of learn the basic tricks before you can move on to this yo-yo. I brought a couple other yo-yos that are favorites of mine. Because the guy that invented these is from Shelby Township, which is not too far from here. I call them fast yo-yos, but my friend Hans, who invented these, had the idea that you could do two yo-yos at one time. They go fast because they really have short strings. And to do two at a time, here's how you learn to do cool tricks. Start with the basic tricks, the power throw, the forward pass. Put those two together, but go different directions. Practice this a little bit, and people think you actually know what you're doing. Now, I hope you remember loop de loop It's one of my favorite tricks. If you can learn to loop de loop with each hand, you can try to do two at a time. They call it whirly bird. And you can hop the fence with each hand. And if you do it together, it'll look like you're milking a cow. That's the easy part. It's the other part I can't do. Finally, my friend Hans, who invented that yo-yo, also invented a butterfly version. And it's got a bearing and it's non-responsive. So the first yo-yo I showed you, the whole idea is you want the yo-yo to come back when you pull up on the string. This one will not, you have to trick it to make it come back to your hand. But once you get it spinning, you can thread the needle, do all kinds of variations. And this is uh, called the green machine. This is a special yo-yo, it's a Chinese yo-yo. It's called a Diablo, D-I-A-B-O-L-O. -O. You can look it up in the dictionary. Diablo means two bells. So if I cover one of these halves of the Diablo, it looks kind of like a bell. We could have a dinger down here. Ding, ding, ding. Here's the thing. They're connected, and but this is so big that you have to put the string on sticks. Just 
to make this yo-yo spin, it's just like all yo-yos, you have to get it going fast. So if I just spin it with my wrist, it won't go fast enough for me to do tricks. But if I set it on top of the string, get it started, and then pull the string over the top, back and forth, it goes faster, 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 faster. If I keep doing this, it keeps going faster. When it's going fast enough, I can do a trick called the elevator. It'll climb the whole length of the string. I'll do it on the count of three. Count with me. One, two, three. Going up. Do it again. Then do the trapeze. Not once, not twice. Three times. Look. It's still spinning. You want to see it go over a foot in the air? Watch. Over a foot in the air. And my favorite trick is the trampoline. I hope that's not going out of the picture. Whatever. Okay. Now, there's different kinds of Chinese yo-yos, just like there's different kinds of regular yo-yos. I'm going to hold this one up close so you can see. It even has Chinese writing on it. It also has a hypnotic design. When it spins, if you watch that, you will go into a trance. You will be hypnotized. And you may hear a subliminal message. This yo-yo also has holes in the edge. When this spins, the air inside vibrates, which creates a sound. And since sound is energy, the faster it goes, the louder it gets. I'll get it going fast, and then I'll hold it up, and you can listen for the secret message. Roll it to get it started. Watch. That's the amazing whistling yo yo. Now, I know kids like toys that make noise, so I brought one today that you can try to make at home. I made this toy myself. It's an Australian toy. It's called the Bull Roar because you can make the bull roar. It gets pretty loud. How do you make one? Well, I took a shoelace and a stick, and I put some colored tape on the stick, and I connected it to the shoelace with a swivel. That allows the stick to spin real easily, and it doesn't twist the shoelace up. The idea of the bull roar is similar to the whistling yo-yo. If you spin the stick and twirl it through the air, it'll vibrate the air, which creates sound. Sound is a form of energy, so the faster it goes, the louder it gets. Get way back so you can see it. Listen. Oops. The bull roar. Now. Where do 
you get sticks? Well, you could go to a hardware store and they might be able to give you a little paint stick to stir paint with. I've had students make these up and, and just use tongue depressors. So that won't be as loud if you have a smaller stick. But this is just about a foot long and about a quarter of an inch wide. So if you want to make one, have at it. It's a good little weekend project. Now I got one magic trick I wanted to show you because people always say, well, how long is your yo-yo string supposed to be? Well, according to the books, if you get a book here at the library, they would say from your belly button to the floor. But I have been buying yo-yo strings for years, and sometimes they're different lengths. For example, here's a short string. Here's a medium-sized string. And here's a long string. This would be no good for yo-yoing because your yo-yo would hit the floor if you held it up like this. This is way too short. The, the middle one might not be too bad, but how do you, how do you ch or change that or fix it? Well, here's what I came up with. If you line up the ends of the strings so they're even, and then you take the other ends and you bring them up so they're even. And then you take the middle one, bring it up, lined up, see, they're even. And then you bring the long one up, line them up so they're even. The problem is you've got this mess hanging down in the middle. How do you get rid of that? All you need to know is some magic words. The magic words I use are stretcho, stretcho, shrinko, shrinko. So watch. Stretcho, stretcho, shrinko, shrinko. Stretcho, stretcho, shrinko, shrinko. Stretcho, stretcho, shrinko. Shrinko. And now you've got three pieces of rope that are all the same size, and now you can go out and put them on your yo-yos and have fun. I got one other trick I wanted to show everybody today. It's one of my favorites. I just got one of these colorful napkins at a party store. And I thought, I wonder what I could do for that uh, that would be really cool that kids would like. And I thought, okay, well, let's just take it and I'll start off and tear it into two halves. I'll put one in front of the other and tear it into four quarters. Now, remember how I do this so you can try it at home. You take the four quarters put them in front of each other, and this time, you tear it into 10 dimes. And finally, take the dimes and tear them into 20 nickels. Take all of that paper and fold it up inside out, outside in, outside in, inside out, and then fold it around, and then squeeze it in your hand and crush it as hard as you can. Reach into your pocket and get some invisible magic woofle dust and sprinkle it on the papers as you say these special magic words. You say, hocus pocus, hocus pocus, hocus pocus, alamidocus, hocus pocus, chicken bones choke us. Take the pieces of paper and put them in your mouth, but don't swallow. Rip around a little bit, okay? And pull it out. And it'll be all back again.
just made is a Christmas tree decoration for next Christmas. Now there's one more thing I want to teach everybody here today and that's how to juggle. Juggling is a lot of fun. I brought some juggling balls to show you. I'm going to start off with two. Most kids do start off with two and not three. What they learn to do is to throw with one hand, usually the right hand, and then catch with the other. So they hand one of them on. They learn to juggle two like this. But if they ever want to juggle three, and that's what's really fun because you can do hundreds and hundreds of tricks, you have to throw and catch with each hand. So here I'm throwing and catching in the same hand. And I have a rhythm or a count. I say one, two, one, two, one, two. If you want to learn to do this, don't be afraid to pick up some items, throw them up in the air, catch them in the same hand, but say one, two, one, two. It's not one, two, it's one, two. One, two. Now, the secret is to learn to make the X. I hope you all know the letter X. It looks kind of like this. It's like two diagonal lines. That's the letter X. So if you make the X, you say one, two, one, two, one, two. You're on your way. You can even add a third ball. One, two, one, two, one, two. And all of a sudden, you're juggling three. Now note that I don't throw them high. I can see both hands and all three balls at the same time. Now if I throw one high, a little harder to catch. Oh wow, I almost dropped one. I'm gonna show you an easy trick. I'm gonna take the pink ball, and throw it over the top. This is an easy trick to learn. If you want to see a hard trick, I'll throw both yellow at the same time. How do you learn to do that? Well, Maybe the easiest way is with nylon scarves. Because they fall slower than the balls. So if I throw this up in the air, it falls slow. Slow. One, two, one, two. Now I'm going to make the letter X. If I get a third one, I can learn to do three easily. Boom. Ta da. What if you don't have scarves? These are plastic bags, a little plug to batteries plus. You can use grocery bags like this. If you cut the handles off, you see how, how, how slowly they fall? And even a dish towel works. After you've learned to do three of those, I recommend learning to juggle with bean bags. 
You could even use old Beanie Babies. Because if you're just a beginner, you're going to drop. And what happens when you drop one of these bean bags? It stays right there. I also recommend that you do this in front of your bed or in front of a couch. That will keep you from having to bend all the way down to the floor every time you drop something. But it can be fun to learn to do the bags. And you can do lots of patterns. And during this COVID season, this is something that you can do indoors. Just watch out for the light fixtures. Finally, if you really want to spend some time, you can learn to do clubs. What makes these hard to juggle is you have to learn to control the spin. So what I recommend is use two bags, one club, then use one bag, two clubs, and then finally you can try to do three. So the grand finale today, I will leave you with my favorite trick of all. This is called the do nothing machine. I met a guy who taught physics at the University of Michigan. And I said, what is that thing you've got on your desk? And he said, oh, that's the do-nothing machine. And I said, what's a do-nothing machine do? And he looked at me and he said, nothing. And I said, I want one for my ad. How does it work? And he said, nobody's ever figured it out. That's why we need kids to become scientists. So someday, one of the kids that you know may figure out how this works. And I said, well, show it to me. He said, okay, watch carefully. When you pull down on the white pom-pom, the yellow pom-pom goes up. And when you pull down on the yellow pom-pom, the white pom-pom goes up. And I said, I know how that works. He said, wait, I'm not done. He says, when you pull on the white pom-pom, even though the yellow pom-pom goes up, the white pom-pom is connected to the red pom-pom. And he said, when you pull down on the yellow pom-pom, the white pom-pom goes up, but the yellow pom-pom is connected to the blue pom-pom. And he said, it's even harder to figure out because if you lift up on the red pom-pom, the yellow pom-pom goes up, but the red pom-pom is connected to the white pom-pom. And when you lift up on the blue pom-pom, the white pom-pom goes up, but if you turn it upside down, inside out, and backwards, now when you pull down on the red pom-pom, the blue pom-pom goes up, and when you pull down on the blue pom-pom, the red pom-pom goes up, but the red pom-pom is connected to the white pom-pom. And I said, would you stop that pom-pom talk? Just unscrew it right there in the middle. Take it apart. Let me look in both sides and I'll buy it off. And he said, no problem. So he took it apart and he let me look in both sides and they were both empty. And then he did this, and this is one of the worst things I've ever seen anybody do because he was a short little guy and he had a real funny voice. And this is what he said, he said, don't just remember. If there's nothing over here, and there's nothing over here, there must be nothing in the middle. <laughs> so that's his uh, punchline. Can anybody guess what I did to him? I didn't punch him. I paid him for it. Because now, whenever I do this in my act, I'm actually getting paid for doing nothing. Isn't that something? But I don't want you to go out and get one of these because then you'll start doing nothing and I'll end up having to do something. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching my show today. I hope you learned to juggle and learn some yo-yo tricks. Uh, if you enjoyed the show today, please remember my name 
is Zemo. And if you didn't enjoy the show today, please remember my name is David Copperfield. Thanks a lot. Please come out to the Macomb uh, Public Library, Clinton Macomb Public Library. There's books here on magic, juggling, yo-yos, and a lot more. You can be a performer someday if you want, just like I do. Thanks again for watching.